Hi, I'm Dan Spiller, and over the course of these videos I'll be showing you everything you need to know to make high detailed models like the ones I made here in Tinkercad. These models are for a game called Droid Storm, where you draft parts, build robots, then battle with them in an arena. It's awesome! So look for it this winter 2021 on Kickstarter. Now you might be thinking, I could never make anything as detailed as that. But as a 43 year old with no previous artistic experience, I'm here to confirm that you can. But first I have to ask if you've already gone through Tinkercad's basic tutorial. If not, go do so. It's short, simple, and you need those skills to understand what comes next. Before you know it, you'll be making detailed models as simple as one, two, three. Just kidding! It's much more complicated than that, so let's begin. Section 1. The Ultimate Beginner's Secret. Copy, copy, copy! Use real life shapes and other people's work to help guide and focus you. Just like when you were a kid trying to color in the lines of a coloring book or draw a flower by staring at one, the best way to start making things in Tinkercad is by copying them. Sketch a rough outline with shapes and adjust them as best you can. As time progresses, you will be able to design bigger and more complex things. But until then, always try to practice a little each day. It's called Tinkercad after all, so tinker away! Section 2. The Precision of the Keyboard Using the mouse to adjust shape handles or to move objects is garbage at best. Arrow keys and directional number inputs are vastly superior. In the Tinkercad tutorial, you're supposed to place shapes in areas using the mouse. While large movements with the mouse are faster, they're finicky to pinpoint, and you can't adjust their height unless you mess with the special black cone handle. Arrow keys, on the other hand, work well to nudge objects in any direction, and if you hold the control key, you can even move an object up or down. But wait, there's more! If you hold the shift key while pressing an arrow key, that counts as 10 arrow presses, moving the shape faster. This works well when you need to move shapes out of the way and then return them to their exact space. And yes, you can hold shift while moving parts up and down. Finally, we have the input boxes for the shape handles. If you use the mouse to resize things, you're likely to alter more than one dimension at once, and it's really hard to get the exact size you need. This is the opposite of useful. By clicking on a handle box directly, you can place any number in the box to change the shape's dimension as desired. In doing so, only the selected dimension will change and it will grow or shrink in the direction of the handle selected. The shift key can also be used here to universally scale all parts of an object without distorting it. Just select the object. Then, while holding shift, move one of the handles, or type in the amount you want to change the shape using the input boxes. Note the entire shape will expand or shrink to the number you input. For example, to increase a shape that's 10 units across by 10%, hold shift when you click on one of the handles and input 11 into the 10 box. Section 3. Find your center. To help align, measure, and adjust your pieces, every 3D model needs a central area to focus around. For some of my minis, I use the model's base as its center. For parts that don't have a base, I place or fake one anyway. Lastly, you can also designate a central part or column of parts to be the center instead. This is useful for when you are attaching non-symmetrical shapes together, as the center of the combined piece will shift, and you'll still need something to align your other shapes to. Section 4. The Duplicate Function While you can use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste shapes like you would in a Word document, Control D or Duplicate is a smarter function. When you duplicate a shape, the new shape is placed directly over the old one. This keeps everything in alignment, making it easier to move, alter, and replace without destroying the original design. Secondly, if you use Duplicate then move or scale the new piece, additional uses of the Duplicate command will cause the next piece to copy those changes an additional time. This allows you to scale, rotate, and create complex shapes and patterns all with a single command. This is very useful. In my next video called Advanced Tinkercad Tips in 5 Minutes Video 2, Advanced Planning and Details, you will see advanced techniques such as the importance of keeping your project divided into sections, how to round shapes and make shapes with slopes, making your own high definition shapes, mirroring and connecting model faces. For exclusive models and articles, please support me on Patreon. Link in the description below. If you found this video useful, please like it. If you have any questions or comments, I like those too. Yes, you can commission me for consulting, designing, and even mailing you custom prints. I hope to hear from you all soon.